Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my vlog, which today we're on a field trip. We're not at Roots and Refuge Farm, but we are here in South Carolina, and I have someone to introduce you to. Betsy. Hi. This is Betsy. Um, we met for the first time. I mean, it's been... I went to Arkansas uh, to a book signing. It's been before we moved. Yeah. And she flew out to a book signing. I did. And we met. And then she ended up coming out from California to our first Wilder Still event. Yeah. And then she messaged me. I had messaged her and kind of checked up. She'd been on my mind. And uh, she said, actually, I'm going to come back through South Carolina. And she said, well, I'm actually meeting a realtor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and here we are. And here we are. <laughs> on your land, farm on girl. Land. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Look at this beautiful property. You want to tell us about it? Um, it's 10 acres, eight of it is cleared, two is not, um, and it was parceled off from the neighboring horse ranch. Yes. So, awesome. raw land, ready yeah. to go. And you've got your parents here. And my parents are here, and my partner was supposed to come, but we had some family stuff come up, so, yeah. uh, she's not here, but hi, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to take the opportunity, we're about to walk around the lane, I'm going to see it. Um, because I have so many people, I have many people actually have, are looking at this area. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a great area to homestead because we can pretty much grow food year round. There are a lot of freedoms here in South Carolina to grow food. And a lot of people are looking here for property. A lot of people are looking for property all over the place. All You're, over the you place. know, people moving out of places uh, like California, bigger cities, looking for more rural areas. And I knew I was coming here to see this land and I thought I want to maybe shoot a vlog and talk about what do you look for whenever you're looking for land from a, literally <laughs> Oh, all sure. the way across the country. Yeah, that's true. Uh, coast to coast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could not have moved further away. No. <laughs> you would I, mean, have I guess I could have, but I don't know if I'd want to. Yeah. This is pretty good. This is yeah. far enough. Yeah. Um, this, I think that's a big deal, and I think a lot of people are really intimidated at the idea of looking for land. Sure. Um, so, can you tell me what you were looking for? whenever you were making this across the country potential move? Uh, first thing was affordability. Yes. Um, we're from California and I'm sure as everyone maybe knows that California is just not a good place um, for your pocketbook yeah. to kind of do this. Um, homestead, raise your, raise your own food and stuff. Uh, second was community. Uh, when we came out here, we were surprised at how many people were just hands-on, wanting to help, wanting to do whatever, be a part of whatever mm -hmm. you've got going on. And um, we thought that was really cool. Yeah. So it was like, you know, if we're going to do this, we need community. Yeah. And just a place to spread out and yes. do what we want to do, grow a big garden, have some animals, yeah. you know, so... It's awesome. And your your dad is so cool. You've told me this story. Like, he is... <laughs> sure. He, he's, like, legit from... He's legit. Yeah, he's <laughs> legit. Yeah, he, uh, he grew up doing all of this. He grew up in the Pyrenees Mountains in the Basque country, which is the southern part of France, northern part of Spain. And they raised all their own food, grew mm -hmm. their, you know, had their animals, grew a garden. If they didn't have something, they would trade and barter with neighbors. And it's amazing. Yeah, they would, you know. Well, we need people like him. Yeah, so he, he's us. helped a lot with yeah. uh, with everything we've got going on and what we want to do. And he, he's been a huge help. Yeah. yeah, like seeing the joy <laughs> on your dad's face. Oh, yeah, he's excited. <laughs> over this is really, really cool. Yeah. That's amazing. All right, so I just asked the, a very important question <laughs> when you're looking for land. Uh -huh. And this is something people always say, what do I look for? And my very first question to them is always, what do you want to do? Because if you are a vegan family of two, you don't need massive pastures. No. You know, I mean, that's just not something you're going to need. You need good soil and garden areas. That's what you would want. Um, if you have a penchant for a certain type of animal you want to look for a property that they're going to thrive on now this particular property i was noting because you can see here we're walking through um obviously this it's winter and this grass is has died back but we're walking through a very lush pasture here so lots of grass eight cleared acres two wooded acres which means i mean and this is all it's not flat it's like slightly rolling 
um, but you could pretty much do what you wanted here. Yeah, like the slope you, isn't. Yeah, terrible. the slope's yeah. not terrible. It's great. Like you can garden here. Um, now in South Carolina, we have two main types of soil: clay or sand. This is on the sand side. I was noticing out yeah. here, um, which means you'll probably have to do a little bit of amending. But you can grow great watermelons in the sand. Sure, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can um, always amend soil. Yeah, I'm not uh, soil about that. can always be amended, <laughs> even if you have next to no topsoil. In just a couple of years, especially if you are going to keep animals and have that resource, you can amend soil. Yeah. But um, you could keep a cow here. You could keep goats here with those woods. You could pasture some pork. But what she was saying, she has a special affection for sheep. Sheep. <laughs> and yeah. what were you saying about your family? I said, hold uh, on, just, wait, that's too good. <laughs> yeah, so with my dad and knowing my family that is still in France and knowing all of their history, um, I have a lot of shepherds in my family and they would keep really large flocks of sheep and in the Pyrenees mountains in the summertime they'd take them up to the highest mountain ranges and let them graze for the summer and uh, I've been out there during that time too and just to visit family and it's just so majestic and yes. I've just always had this like love for sheep. Yeah. I don't know it's just in my blood I guess I don't know. <laughs> yeah well I think you bought a great property to keep sheep because you have lots of grass here and that's yeah. what they need so that this is, is lovely. Yeah. It's wonderful. All right, back on this farm, which was completely raw land, just less than two years ago. Isn't that just wild to think about? It's amazing to me today going to that property and just looking at the raw potential. It's very overwhelming whenever you're finding raw land. And of course, I didn't make quite the same distance of move coming from Arkansas to here but we did make a pretty big move. I mean, it was 700 miles. It was it was large enough that it wasn't just easy to pop over to the land and get things done and get things ready. It took a lot of logistics. Interestingly, today, as I went and stepped out onto that raw land, it really brought a lot of that back to me because it was such a season for us of like, just kind of like putting your head down, putting your blinders on and getting through it, one task to the next, that I'd I don't think I really appreciated how hard it was. And I know a lot of people are in that position right now of making big moves a lot of times where it's not logistically simple and buying raw land. Because there has been such a demand on rural properties in the last couple of years, it's really kind of changed the game. So after I turned the camera off, a neighbor came up and I ended up sticking my camera in the car. Um, I got to talk some more to Betsy's dad and hear some of his stories and I'm really hoping that one day we're going to be able to get him on the channel <laughs> to tell us some of his stories of his uh, growing up in a truly like community sufficient uh, food situations. Very, very fascinating. If you have somebody, by the way, a little side note here, if you have somebody in your life that has that kind of knowledge you should really be tapping into that. Those of you who have grandparents or parents or any, you know, doesn't have to be a relative, any person in your life that would give you their time and recollect their stories and knowledge, it would, it would serve you very well to sit down with them and your computer where you can take notes or a recorder on, you know, phones have voice memo on them now and ask questions. Gosh, what I wouldn't give to just sit down with my grandparents and, um, ask them questions about you know their parents and growing food because I know my pappy though he didn't grow up like when I was growing up he was not growing food but his childhood was through the depression his family was very poor but through the depression they grew food for their neighbors and I just I don't know I have a lot of questions that I can't get the answers to if you still have access to that it's amazing and you know just Betsy's dad today and the way that he lit up over the property and just thinking about how he was raised I just I saw a real treasure trove of knowledge there maybe one day I'll be able to get him on a video for you he also has a very cool accent uh, so anyway back to the topic of finding land and you know I'm, we mentioned earlier what do you want to do with it we actually dove really deep on this on a podcast that's coming up uh, Jeremiah and I discussed this very topic and it comes back to me to having your five-year plan of knowing what it is that you hope to do with whatever property it is that you're buying um, because for instance like if you and your plans are going to change at some point, there are probably gonna be some things that you try that you find out you didn't like or try and you find out you did like. 
but having the general idea that for instance like if you've got a dairy allergy and you know you're not going to want dairy cows but you might want dairy goats those kinds of things put all of those little bits and pieces down um, if you want to be super sustainable and you don't want to just garden for yourself but you're wanting to garden for other people or maybe you're wanting to grow some fodder food to be able to be more sustainable with your animals all of these things are going to go into what you're looking for when you shop for lamb especially if you're shopping for land during a time that it may be a little bit hard because it, you can get kind of desperate and though you have all of these goals you can end up jumping on a piece of property out of desperation that honestly is not going to serve those goals well so having your five-year plan at least somewhat lined out is very important having like general goals of what you want and then finding a property that is going to serve those well and um, there are certain things that can be amended soil soil can be amended um, a property that is largely wooded even though you know you're going to want a pastures is a lot harder to amend uh, th it's not impossible that might not be a, a deal breaker however calling around and finding kind of what things like that are going to cost and what access you're going to have to resources to do that is really important for us um, we actually ended up buying this piece of property which we're initially wanting 40 acres um, and this is 27 and we looked at multiple properties that were 32 37 30, like multiple that were larger but some of the ground was really craggy or it was um, very wooded it was very very sloped and we decided that this 27 acres that was so largely usable was going to serve us better than maybe a larger property that was less usable. Because of the fact that we were moving from so far, we couldn't really take the time from long distance to try to clear that land. We couldn't afford to pay somebody else to do it. So for us, finding a smaller property that was like ready to start building on was a really big deal. And I think that Betsy made a really good choice in the property she found because there is so much open. Now, I love having some woods. I mean, they've got two acres that are wooded and a lot of it was hardwood oak, which is very valuable. Coming from a far distance, I think quickly usable property is something really valuable to look for. We actually ended up finding our property on like Zillow or Trulia, like one of the apps where we went in to, I know we did Zillow and Trulia. I feel like there was another one I can't remember that basically has all the listings and we went in did a saved search and then turned on notifications so that anytime something new came up within the parameters of what we were looking for we would get a notification we found this property when the phone buzzed while we were sitting at the table and it was the listing being sent to us by one of those apps however i know many people have really done well with finding a realtor um, that deals with you know somewhat rural real estate in an area it's hard if you find a realtor that really just shows like residential houses but finding somebody that kind of knows the area is really beneficial but ask around like before you just choose any realtor say i specifically want somebody that knows the rural properties in the rural regions of this area and lastly like my last little tip as far as finding land and there this is a very big topic this could be very in-depth and this is not really what i meant to do with this video there are a lot of facebook groups for different cities so for instance we live near batesburg leesville south carolina and there are multiple little facebook groups that are like living in batesburg leesville and even like the area garage sale facebook page if you are looking at an area and a city or town or whatever i would highly suggest going and plugging in to some of those like social media groups before we moved here i did that and there are a lot of listings that'll pop up on there that are the things that aren't necessarily listed on the MLS. I have another friend that recently moved from California to Tennessee and you know they ended up finding a property and then through getting connected with local people ended up finding more land and it was just a really cool story. And in my experience of moving to a small town I see properties change here often that never get listed. So when it comes to rural property it can really help to try to get connected to local people doesn't always work that way again sometimes this helps with the realtor uh, that knows people because if you're relocating you likely don't know anybody um, and and trying to get on those connections it doesn't always work and that's not a black and white thing that's like hey do this uh, but maybe do try to do that building your farm on raw land 
is hard. Takes longer, obviously. There's a lot more investment. However, um, it can make a place really custom. Doing a lot of work yourself can save you money. And for us, you know, we we ended up choosing raw land. We did have some fences and some really kind of rough structures here, but we had no utilities and we ended up taking down all the fences and are currently on the way of taking down all the structures. But for us, it was kind of the dream of wanting to build something that we really wanted. We were not opposed to finding a place with a house um, as long as there was enough space to eventually build another house. We just didn't find one. Um, we were relocating during 2020 and 2021 and, you know, the housing market was going crazy. We felt so blessed to get the property that we did. And it's exactly where we're supposed to be. But I am curious, like, what are your questions as far as searching for raw land, what to look for? I, like I said, we did cover that in a podcast. Uh, that should be coming out here just in the next few weeks. I'm not sure exactly what the schedule is, but I'd be glad to cover the topic more thoroughly if there's something that I have to share that can help you. Oh, and speaking of my podcast, I know I'm kind of bouncing all over the place. Um, it was a social day for me. I had multiple social things and then I came home and painted with my kids. So <laughs> now I'm like, a little frazzled but uh our podcast you guys are amazing you just came out of the gate supporting us big time there was a little technical glitch the day that we announced our podcast um because apparently when you publish your first podcast sometimes it takes a little while for them to show up on other platforms so it is showing up on spotify now it is showing up on iHeartRadio, and it will be on um apple podcasts we're just waiting because they said sometimes it takes a couple of episodes before it actually starts showing up so keep an eye out for it it should pop up there at some point uh, there are two episodes now live the la the next one went live today and like i said we we did a answering your questions where we talked somebody asked what do you look for in land and jeremiah and i talked about it very in-depth and I think that's really good so keep an eye out for that and if you have any questions let me know in the comment section thank you guys for hanging out with me today I bless you until next time